Hello and welcome back to Foose Entertainment. This time for my review of 2018, I believe. Nope. 2018's Ant Man and the Wasp. So I close on, uh, up on the end of my MCU month, which of course is will be uploaded a little bit late, but not too late. Well, Ant-Man and the Wasp. Well, um, I would have to say, this is a good movie. <clears throat> In some ways, though, it does suffer. I would say that there was um, some things about the first Ant-Man that I enjoyed a lot more than, than the, the sequel. But... Vice versa, there's a lot of stuff in Ant-Man and the Wasp which um, expand on the, on the first film and make it a much bigger movie. So it's kind of like, you know, a mixed opinion between the two films. I would say that uh, we enjoyed the visual effects in this one. I really also enjoyed um, the action sequences were awesome in this movie. Um, we could use martial arts. It definitely feels like a comic book movie, which I definitely like. Um, pretty good use of all the characters, I would say. I'll say this, that um, Paul Rudd did an amazing job in this movie. I mean, um, he's over the top hilarious in this movie. But there are points in the film where he can be very, very serious. Which is... Um, What's really cool about Paul Rudd, sorry, Paul, um, Paul Rudd, Paul Rudd, um, Paul Rudd is a very interesting actor in that regard. So now I always like to give you guys this little behind the scenes stuff on um, the actors and stuff. So um, I have reviewed this movie before as well, um, but Paul Rudd's first film was Halloween, The Curse of Michael Myers in 1995. He's not um, humorous at all in that movie. So, it's very cool that somebody like Paul Rudd, who is so well known for being uh, a comedian, can play a serious character too. And that's what works so well with um, with this movie. It's the fact that he kind of does both at the same time. Give me a second here, people. Um, but... Um, yeah, I can certainly say I uh, certainly enjoyed his performance. Um, adding um, Nicole Kidman to the uh, mix was uh, pretty cool. Sorry, not, not not Nicole Kidman. Why the hell did I think that? Um, Ma Michelle Pfeiffer. Adding Michelle Pfeiffer to the um, casting was a pretty good move. I think that she really embodies, um, embodies the... Um, character of these editor Ant-Man, you know, because there were two Ant-Man originally. The relations for S.H.I.E.L.D. and, of course, it was Hank and his wife. So, having Michelle Pfeiffer play um, Hank's wife was actually very, very cool. Sherlock, you can't keep rolling yourself against the tripod. You're going to make make shaky cam. This cat just loves me too much. But, um, <clears throat> yeah, I really enjoyed that. The visual effects are pretty cool. I mean, we we have seen the Quantum Realm and obviously Doctor Strange. We've seen the first Ant-Man movie. <clears throat> but it really is spectacular in this movie. Which I definitely enjoy. And um, really, this is, this is a very visually stunning movie. Now let's talk about the plot. Taking place, I say, two years, obviously, um, after the events of Captain America Civil War, Scott Lang has been on probation and has been under house arrest. He's closing in on his last um, week of um, being on house arrest with an ankle monitor. And... Um, He's having these really interesting um, visions and dreams of when he was in the quantum realm. 
and in the course he starts dreaming about um, Hank's um, wife, you know, um, Michael Douglas' character's wife. So, um, and we also, also get to see kind of, you know, at the beginning of the film, what led to Hank's wife going into the quantum realm permanently. Sacrifice she did and all that stuff, um, saving um, countless lives from a missile attack. Going pramatonic and going into the missile itself and destroying it. Um, which, of course, caused her to go into the quantum realm. And having visions of her as if he actually is her. Jump, kind of jumping into consciousness, I guess, in a small way. In memory. And um, that kind of catches the attention of, uh, of Eve. I think that, I think that, I think that I actually Lily might be, but I think that's just the actress's name. But, um... Yeah, it doesn't tell her name in here, and I always forget her name. But, obviously, the woman who, of course, is Wasp. Um, kind of catches her attention, and it catches, um, Hank's attention, and basically they, without incriminating him, break him out of house arrest. And they have this facility, and they want to go into the quantum realm and extract, um, obviously, Hank's wife. Um... Undertale is this um, woman who, with one of Hank's assistants when he, in his earlier S.H.I.E.L.D. days, when he was young, um, he was kind of let go to his ambitions from Hank. Continued experiments, and it went very bad to cost a, a scientist his life and his wife's life. And the daughter was supposed to die, but the daughter did not die. But instead... Um, Phase particles kind of destroyed her body to where she goes in and out of phase constantly. And on a ticking, ticking clock to her, it's um, completely going out of phase forever and dying. The character's name is Ghost. Um, and she was a shield assassin for many, many years. And she's on a tell because she wants to get the facility and, you know, wants to basically extract um, Hank's wife's energy within a quantum realm to repair her molecules and to allow her to be permanently in phase instead of in and out of phase. And you also have these um, arms dealers. You want the um, lab for their own um, black market purposes. And so, a lot of cool shit there. Of course, um, Lang and company has to f get the um, lab and get in there and extract um, Hank's wife and bring her back to reality, back to this realm, and out of the quantum realm. They eventually do all that. Ghost um, gets um, somewhat cured by special abilities that Hank's wife uh, acquired while being in the quantum realm. And... Um, we will this happy ever after until the very end in the post credit sequence to where, um, obviously, Hank and his wife in Wasp all get dusted with the effects of what Thanos did with his snap. And Scott Ling is left in the quantum realm with no way out. Which, of course, leads into the events of the Avengers in the Avengers in game. Now, um, I always thought that you should watch this movie after Infinity War. It's because of the fact that, um, in a lot of ways, Scott Lang's story begins from this events of this movie in Endgame. And I'll get to that when, I, of course, I review Endgame. But, um, yeah. Definitely enjoyed the movie. Um, audio and video quality. This is much like Thor Ragnarok. Um, the, um... Video quality is very much brighter while still having that warm digital type of look that we have used to with the MCU. Um, the uh, audio quality is a lot like Thor Ragnarok with it being, um, you could tell that they kind of turned down the, the magnetic blast levels of the, of the movie, but not so much to the point where you don't have a good experience. 
So there's still lots of really good experience for sound in there. Overall, I said say this film was very, very good. Um, it's certainly not as good as the first Ant-Man, in my opinion. Um, but some people might disagree with that, and I'm okay with that. Um, well, that's my uh, view and thoughts on um, Ant-Man and the Wasp in 2018. Um, hope you enjoyed it, and I will see you guys next time for my um, review of The Avengers Infinity War. Until then.